Make sure. Hold on, please. Okay. Make sure it started at zero. Damn. <sighs> so, just finished training with my new job. Get straight in the car, straight on the highway, put our stuff in storage, get to the airport, 2 a.m. departures from Tijuana. Directly, thankfully, to Tapachula. That was yesterday. We got the boat ready pretty much yesterday. Today, we fuel up and we're waiting for the wind. The Tuantepec winds are screaming right now. 50 knots out there. So tomorrow should drop back down to 30s and we leave tomorrow. By the next day, it's dropped right off. So we may have a rough ride initially, but we're running out of time. This is cruising on a schedule. <laughs> Gotta get back to work. It's okay. We won't be sailing. We'll, we'll be motoring. What's wrong? So, you do? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Seros? Okay, check. Gracias. Whoa, 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 stop. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Too much? Yeah. I, I don't have even control. So he has a control. What? So it's no very slow, slow, yeah? Okay, okay. Yeah, you have the control. Yeah, but it was stuck on. Oh. Bueno. Wow, it's been a while. It has been six months since we moved Jupiter. We've been in Chiapas, Mexico, Marina for that long. Uh, we haven't been here, been busy doing other things. Just finished training a few days ago, got my first time off, we got uh, 10 days off, come to the boat. So our goal is to move Jupiter as far north west as we can uh, along the coast into the Sea of Cortez. This trip is just as far as Ixtapa, Zuhuanehe. How do you say it? Zuhuanehe. 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 What she said. It's low tide right now. It looks really shallow. Our route is only about 550 miles, but there's some challenges. The initial 200 miles is straight across the Tehuantepec winds, which is, it's like the skinniest part of Mexico. And there's a saddle in between mountains or ranges and all of the Caribbean winds funnel down through it. Been waiting here the last three days, actually waiting for this weather to uh, drop off this uh, wind. It was 40 knots on the forecast, so out there it's going to be 50. It would be a beam reach, but still, you don't want to be in 50 knots. Hopefully the most we see is 20, 30 knots, and tomorrow gets lighter still. And then after that it will be motoring for the remainder 350 miles, because uh, it's either it's very light wind or it's wind, it's a very light wind against us. So we'll definitely be motoring. So our goal is to get up to Puerto Penasco, which is the very top of the Sea of Cortez. And uh, we're going to do that before hurricane season. And that's quite, that's doable. Plan is to haul Jupy out, because he needs a bit of loving. He needs uh, some, his paint. Paint is eight years old now. And uh, he needs a bit of a touch up here and there, at least. We'll see, but maybe a complete repaint, we'll see. <sighs> so it's good to be moving. Good to be moving. Well, we've been going about four hours, five. So far, no wind at all. Expected to pick up uh, probably by around about dark, I'd say. So it's lunchtime, I would say by six. We expect to be sailing. Well, the forecast says we'll only get 20 knots. 
Worst case, 30 knots, I would say. So we've got the storm jib ready to go. It's uh, laying there on the deck, pretty sleepy. I woke up at one this morning and didn't get back to sleep. Just thinking about all the things we had to do. Little disappointed. We fully expected Starlink to be working out here. I know it's patchy when you're out at sea. I mean, we're only 20 miles off the coast so far. And the Starlink just within about five miles of the coast, it just stopped working. Tried to reboot the system and the antenna dishy just stowed like almost up and down and he's not interested in coming out you know like I try unstow and it just it doesn't move doesn't search doesn't do anything left it on for the last three or four hours trying to get signal but uh, don't know why I thought other people were having good luck with it out at sea especially coastal like we are a bit disappointing I expected to have internet the whole way Anyway, it's pretty rolly. Uh, it's on the nose, you know, it's a pitchy, it's pretty pitchy. Princess is not feeling well. It is a bit uncomfortable. If we got a little bit of pressure in the sails, it would stabilize the boat a bit, you know, we wouldn't uh, move around so much. Anyway, everything's going well. <laughs> well, we're in luck. Always good to have some luck. The water is so beautiful. More coming, I see a head there, there's more. <laughs> We left at 7 30. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 10 and a half. And it's a beautiful sunset. We finally put the storm jib because we we're getting a little bit of wind. But it's on the nose. It's not really helping right now, but uh, it will in the next couple of hours. And we may, by in about three or four hours, we'll be sailing alone, no motoring. So that'll be good. And I had seasick. I never had a, a very bad seasick for a long time. I remember the last time I was in West Palm Beach in Florida. Going against the Gulf Stream. Yeah. And this is the second. It's not that rough. It's just pit, yeah. pitchy, rolly, short, short chop. Yeah. We have 543 miles to go. Yeah, so I'm a little bit of the Well, we may get 25, 30 knots and it'll be a beam reach with a storm jib already set. Mm -hmm. No problem. What a night. Uh, possibly one of the roughest nights we've ever had. We gave up trying to stay in the cockpit on watch. We just uh, sat inside here on our wet bed 
I'd set the alarm every 20 minutes and I got up and checked no traffic coming I don't know what speeds we do I think we're sometimes up to seven knots but usually around the four or five knots just trying to keep it slow because it's so rough so much water coming over the boat I would say we've got another 10 hours of this and before it drops off Finally, it's calm now. It's been 24 hours of rough passage from Tawana Peck. Uh, yeah, that, that funnel, and that's what it is. It's a funnel of the whole uh, Caribbean winds funneled through that Golfo de Tawana Peck. Seriously, compression zone. I mean, because we were on a schedule, we couldn't wait until it was good conditions. We would have delayed one more day, apparently. Today is better. Well, we know today wasn't, but it takes a day to get there, you know, so this all started happening at about sunset last night, or just after sunset. And it's finished now, just before the sunset the next day. So it's <laughs> 24 hours of, what we, we had gusting 30s, which is not so bad, but it's the sea state. It's a really short chop. It's a yeah. five second period. It's like Indian Ocean. <laughs> Well, no, the Indian's nice, Indian's mm. different, but yeah. it's rough. <laughs> the boat is in an absolute shit state. <laughs> Stuff falling everywhere. There's uh, salt to the masthead. It was like we were getting huge waves <laughs> breaking over the boat. Um. Sitting here, we got swamped several times. We ended up just sitting inside, locked the door and uh, peeking out the windows. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so now we've got 400 miles of this, uh, although we've still got a little bit of wind now, but it's supposed to all die off to a headwind, to a, a little bit of a headwind. So we'll be motoring again soon. Mm. Oh, At so. least I feel better now. Yeah. I had seasick on the first day. I never vomit that much before. <laughs> And the first day is so beautiful. We had dolphins and lots of turtles oh, sunbaking. Those, those landmines everywhere. <laughs> They're so cute. These turtles just sunbake with a big, it looks like a rock. Yeah. And if you hit one, it would feel like a rock. Those guys would have to be I know. 100. 150 kilo. I don't know why they're not moving. Or they they move when they're like near to us already. <laughs> well, seriously, they wait till the very last second. Alrighty. Well, we should be able to sleep better now. Mm -hmm. But we're gonna motor, Apart so from it's the noise. nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Such a good feeling to be back on the ocean. We've been away from Jupiter the most of the last six months. I can't believe it. The time really flew. We've, we were busy, busy, busy starting our new life. Yes, I'm sad that we are no longer full-time cruisers. I am sad. I'm really sad that we didn't finish our circumnavigation. That would be something to just tick off. A medal to wear, I guess. And we haven't done it yet. But the opportunity came up for a job. I never thought that I would go back to flying because four years without touching an aeroplane, nobody wants to hire you anymore. <laughs> you know, if you go beyond six months, nobody wants to hire you. So the opportunity came up in the US for a job and it was something that I've always wanted to do, something I've never done, and that's corporate jet flying. I thought, yeah, the time is right. We've run out of money. I gotta take this job. 
but it is just so nice to be back on Jupiter. I can't believe it's been six months since we've moved on Jupiter, since we've been sailing. And this weather here in Mexico is just beautiful. Cool and crisp at night time, but just the clear blue days all day. So unfortunately, we have to sail or, you know, if, if the mission is to move the boat for whatever reason. Our mission right now is to get up into the northern end of the Sea Cortez, uh, up to a little town called Puerto Penasco. And we plan on hauling Jupiter out there. So we've got to do all this before hurricane season. Every two weeks off, we've got to move the boat, regardless of the weather. The Tuantepec winds, if we'd waited two more days, would have been beautifully calm. But we're on a schedule. Got to do what you got to do. What day are we? So we're on a third day of our passage up to Ziwa. Ziwatanejo, Ziwatanejo, I can say it, Ziwatanejo. We've run out of food that we prepared, so I've got to cook. But the beautiful thing is we are sailing. Never expected to be sailing. We're hard on the wind, 35 degrees apparent. And uh, getting along at eight knots. Motoring, we're only doing four and a half to five into the headwind. So, happy days. We got away with it so far without cooking. Princess had prepared a couple of things before we left. And then that first night, or the first 24 hours was really rough. So today's the first meal that I will cook. A little too rough for Princess to come inside, except for sleeping. The weather's just been beautiful. Last night was a beautiful night, motoring all night, but uh, we've had full moon since the beginning, and we'll have it for the next two nights, and then we'll be there. And we had a win last night, or early this morning, I decided to give the Starlink another shot, because when we left Chiapas, the Starlink stopped working, right? So I tried refreshing it several times and it just, no signal. And it was pretty rough and I was thinking, oh, maybe that's why, because I understand, uh, one, if you go faster than 10 miles an hour, even if you're the RV version, you will not work anymore. And I believe, People have experienced the same thing with rough water, you know, bumpy road. Uh, anyway, this morning was nice and calm. So I was able to put the dishy in, in a different area. I put it in, up on the front deck where it's really clear, no uh, obstructions. And he worked. So that was the problem all along. It was, I had it back near the cockpit here with as clear a sky as I could get, but the bimini's in the way, so that was the issue. So now I've got to try and find somewhere, I think I've got an idea where I can try and mount him, which should be clear of the bimini. So after lunch, that's the project. So good to have internet for the few hours this morning. See, I, I set Dishy up on the uh, boom, but now that we're sailing, I'm using the boom for the main. So, I've got to find him a new home. Dinner? Dinner? Wow. Oh, Elsie, yeah? What? Is that in your, your new pocket? My new pocket. It's my pouch. Mm hmm. Haha. <laughs> Such a good day, gonna have a beer. Cheers. Yeah, you're an Aussie, you need a pouch. You should have a pouch. <laughs> I got one. <laughs> Thank you, Mabby. Nice.
wish, I wish we could use that because it's a little bit longer. So we're trying to install Dishy here out on a on the on the uh, rail there on the on the pulpit. So I'm just going to use uh, big hose clamps to mount this rod holder, but it's big and wobbly now. See, so um, I might actually use that in. But I want Dishy to be able to move when he needs to move, yeah? So he needs some space here. So I'm putting a hose clamp right about there so that he's got this room to move. In fact, I can extend him a little higher about there. And I've also got a string in the hose clamp here so that I can tie Dishy down to the rail. And this is just the first iteration, first attempt here. I'm gonna tie him down so that he can't jump out. I got some big ass hose clamps which are gonna go around there and the rail. So I'm gonna go out on the rail and do that now. This rod hot is pretty flimsy, sort of I've squished it already down the bottom. So this is definitely not a permanent solution. Oh. <laughs> I just locked myself in to start with. And yes, we're just running the cable out the doorway right now. Until we get this perfected. <laughs> Be careful. Deshi! Don't do it, Deshi! Oh no, B. I'm I think that other one will fit, the stronger one. I thought it protruded a little bit, but I want to try it. So this is the one I really wanted to use, but it's really tight. Let's just try, see if it'll fit. I just don't think it will. Oh! <laughs> nice! All right, you're coming off. What? Hey, we just put it on. Yeah, but it's crushing. Uh -huh. We'll get some heavier duty one. It won't crash. Promise me, you just look at the stars and talk to your birdies, <laughs> and that's all you do, okay? That will get bird shit. All right, now connected to Wookie. Now we can watch some live on Jupiter. <laughs> yeah, look at that terrible number. Come on, people. Let's get that up there. 
Here we go. Searching for music for your next video? Yep. Then you need to check out our ads. Watch the ads, yeah? It's really worthwhile for us. Uh, I can't do it, gotta skip. Who's that? We're still in sound, that's when you try. Who's these wankers? <laughs> Thank you, Elon. Yeah, we're going in the wrong direction now. 50 degrees off course. Time to motor again. A month or so ago, our washing machine started misbehaving and then it just wouldn't complete a cycle. It, it, it wouldn't even begin a cycle. I mucked around with it for a long time, took it to bits. I think it was a circuit board problem. Tried to find a spare circuit board. So little information out there. I I'd probably end up buying 100 bucks for a new circuit board and it wasn't the right one, you know, so we just gave it away. Didn't work very well. It turned on, but it didn't do anything it was supposed to. So now we're back to manual labor. I do this anyway. You know? Yeah, the washing machine wasn't that. didn't clean that well, did it? Well, for the bed sheets, it's gonna be hard. Yeah. Alright. I think we're gonna have to start the engine, be going the wrong way. Back to motoring again. Ah, well. We got about two hours out of it. I'm glad I pulled up all the sails just for two hours. <laughs> Probably. Nice. Hey. We're in Pacific <laughs> Ocean somewhere. Yeah. We're sailing. Well. Actually, we're. We're not. <laughs> no, not at all. So we're just off. Uh, we're about 50 miles off the coast, and uh, Acapulco, just there. Mm -hmm. And we're heading to Zihuatanejo. So Ziwa. Zihuatanejo. Zihuatanejo. Yeah. So we got a marina book there, mm. and. We'll have one day, I think we're going to anchor one day in the bay of Zihuatanejo. Mm -hmm. And then we'll go around to Ixtapa Marina, which is another hour or hour and a half. We'll have one day to just make sure Jupy's comfortable. And then we fly out the next morning mm -hmm. back to Tijuana, across the border into San Diego. So next week, I'll be at work for 10 days. Princess is going to go learn to drive a car. Yeah, yeah, passed exam. So she did the theory already, she passed. <laughs> yeah. After that, we're back on the boat. So it's a busy, busy life. That's cool. That's cool. <laughs> Last sleep of the trip, <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Oh wow, so today's day five and we sailed for about maybe 20 hours motoring all this time.
and we had plenty of fuel so that wasn't the issue the engines have been running great and because I I only run one at a time so I do like eight or ten hours on the port and then eight or ten hours on the starboard and then check in between the fluids and you know, been running really well so we're nearly at uh, Ziwatanejo we're not sh we should be there by the end of the day before dark I think four o'clock or so I'm not sure if we should anchor for the first night in the bay or go straight to the marina so apparently we have to check in with the port captain and he's in the bay, whereas the marina is about five miles away, so we'd have to get taxis and stuff. But the comments from other people uh, have been that the port captain is very officious and he charges money where no one else on this coast charges for you to enter an, an, an exit. And he doesn't speak English, and, and the forms are all in Spanish. Maybe we'll go to the marina and see if we can find someone to come with us and assist us and we can do that tomorrow Feel, it feels like it's been a long trip because it's just motoring 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 and I, I think the noise is fatiguing so good that it's the end of the trip today uh. well. <sighs> you're the uh, antennas we used to chase these mobile towers but they're holding our phones up. Give it to me. <laughs> One bar, two bars. And now, Starlink to the rescue. Yay! Good boy, yes.